Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, you know what's out there in the news, right? We're supposed to believe that Luis Ortiz is going to fight Alexander Ustinov, right? And that that fight's being considered. For the undercard of Andre Ward and uh, Sergei Kovalev, right? We're supposed to believe that that's being packaged. Well, I'm going to throw a red cup. It'd be a flag if I were more organized. But I'm going to throw a red cup on all this talk. You know, what I've found with the news that's here online, and I understand it's really the best source, Right, is that it overlooks a key component in boxing. And that's really the fighter. Right? And that's the reality too of the choices unbeaten fighters have. Now let's look closely at Luis Ortiz. Just imagine you're Luis Ortiz. You're well into your thirties. Well into your thirties. Right? You didn't make an Olympic team. You know, I believe Luis Ortiz knows this. Quite frankly, I think many of us know it. We know that if Luis Ortiz gets inside on Anthony Joshua or on Deontay Wilder, guys with belts, it's going to be a mismatch on the inside. Right? Ortiz may not be the athlete either of those guys are, but he's certainly the boxer. Right? Ortiz against either, the title could well change hands. He's a serious threat to the heavyweight title. Right now, let's go one step further. What I'm going to say next is a little bit loaded. It's subject to disagreement. Fair enough. Right? But... I believe the best heavyweight on the planet right now is Tyson Fury. Right? I think Tyson Fury beats the other guys I've just mentioned. Right? Let me be clear. Deontay Wilder, Anthony Joshua. Right? I think Fury's the best champion. I think he beat the real champion. Right? And that was Vladimir Klitschko. Right? Now let's throw Tyson Fury out of the mix. Right? Vladimir Klitschko, if he beats Tyson Fury, now this is a big if, because Klitschko, in my opinion, is already going to be in the Hall of Fame, right? He has other things going on. He's a father now, right? But if he beats Klitschko and if he wants to continue his career, he knows what it's like to be in the ring with Anthony Joshua. He's sparred with him already. He knows what it's like to be in the ring with Deontay Wilder. He's sparred with him already. He's beaten Alexander Povetkin already. An argument can be made, I think it's the right argument, can be made that Vladimir Klitschko should be considered at least the second best heavyweight on the planet. Right? I know this is not what people are focused on in the real world, right? They're saying, hey, Deontay Wilder's a champion, etc., right? We're trying to cut through the public narrative. Why? Because we're trying to get an edge on the casino, right? So we're trying to sniff out what's BS. We're trying to sniff out what's real. I'm just telling you that of all the heavyweights out there, I mean all of them, the worst possible opponent, right, for any fighter in the heavyweight division is going to be the winner of this Tyson Fury-Vladimir Klitschko rematch, right? That's going to be the toughest opponent. If you want a share of the heavyweight title, that's the steepest mountain to climb, right? If they tell you that you have to fight one of the other guys, you're okay, right? At least you have a chance. 
Deontay Wilder's coming off surgery, right? When's the last time, seriously, that Anthony Joshua fought an opponent who could move, right? But if you're in the ring with the winner of Fury Klitschko, you've got to look out for a lot, in my opinion. Well, let's get back to Luis Ortiz. Guess what? Ortiz wants a title. He's unbeaten. He destroyed Brian Jennings. Right? Knocked him down. People understand. This is a skilled guy. He's a legitimate opponent. Now, you look at the guys out there. Anthony Joshua. Getting pressured now. Wants the big money. He's fooling around with these pay outfits. Right? These premium cable channels. The rumor is that Anthony Joshua wants to make a splash in the United States. He wants to expand his base. You know what's going to happen. Right? Showtime is going to come to him and say, look, we look forward to you against Joseph Parker. Right? If we're going to pay you this money, we want you against real opponents. Folks, one of those real opponents could be Luis Ortiz. Now, if you're your Luis Ortiz, think about it. You're supposed to fight Alexander Ustinov for a shot at the heavyweight title. Did you know that <laughs> if he beats Ustinov, then he's in line to fight the winner? The winner of Fury against Klitschko. Right? Let's just figure out where that fight would be. Fury, he's from the United Kingdom. Klitschko fights in Germany. Luis Ortiz is going to have to cross the ocean to fight the toughest guy in the heavyweight division. Right? Think about it. Well, his promoter, Golden Boy, just as an aside, who's Golden Boy? In fact, Oscar De La Hoya. To you, the boxing hardcore. Who do you think Oscar De La Hoya's favorite fighter is in the world? Now, we're speculating here, right? The only way we'd know for sure is if Oscar came here and told us. But just close your eyes for a second and just think about it. Of all the Golden Boy fighters out there, all of them, who do you think is Oscar De La Hoya's favorite fighter? In my mind, tell me if I'm being right or wrong here, in the comment section to this video. In my mind, Oscar's favorite fighter, the guy who Oscar, every time I see Oscar with the guy, Oscar's fawning over the guy, right? That guy is Saul Alvarez. Now, Oscar was prepared to have Luis Ortiz and Alexander Ustinov fight on the undercard of a Canelo match. Right? Someone forgot to clear that with Luis Ortiz, right? Ortiz was like, you got to be kidding, right? You know, Luis Ortiz didn't like the numbers. This is prize fighting, right? To quote Dr. King, you have to keep your eyes on the prize, right? This is prize fighting. So you know what happened. Luis Ortiz said, hey, man, this is not enough for a brother. Right? Too much of the money here is going to the top of the ticket. Why am I why am I on the undercard? I'm a heavyweight fighting for a right to fight against the heavyweight champion. Right? I'm the interim WBA heavyweight champion. Why am I second fiddle? Why am I getting this money? So you know the rest. Luis Ortiz, Houston off aren't on the Canelo undercard. So guess what happened? They actually held a purse bid on the fight, right? Since the negotiated deal wasn't going to happen, we got to the purse bid. Because, of course, the WBA is having a tournament for the heavyweight champion, right? They need for this Houston off Ortiz fight to happen. So you know what happened in the purse bid. 
There's some bad blood out there, folks. I don't care how many times the people involved smile at the camera. I don't care how many times the people say no comment. I don't care if we don't have any quotes from anybody, dissing anybody else. But understand, Golden Boy's not too fond of Luis Ortiz right now. They had the purse bid. Would you be surprised to learn that Luis Ortiz's own promoter, Golden Boy, did not place a bid on his next fight? Think about that. So the winning bid, right? The winning bid on that fight came from Andre Rabisky's World of Boxing, right? Let me apologize for butchering the name. Right? It's Rabinsky's World of Boxing. They're thinking about holding the fight in Moscow. They're thinking about holding the fight possibly in a different location, Belarus, where Houston off is from. Now, I know you're hearing about Las Vegas and stuff like that. Come on now. I don't see that happening. If Ortiz didn't want to be on the Canelo undercard, why would he want to be on the Andre Ward, uh, Sergei Kovalev undercard? Especially for this money. Now let's think about the money. You're a heavyweight in your 30s. You didn't make the Olympic team. You're unbeaten now as a pro. You're on the verge of a title shot. The way the cards are unfolding, you're climbing the highest mountain. Right Fury, Klitschko winner. To do that after facing Ustinov, who's only lost once, right? How much money do you think Ortiz should get for this fight? If he loses it, his career tumbles, right? Because let's face it, the other guys aren't going to fight him unless they have to fight him. They only have to fight him if he's a mandatory or if a network says, look, this dude is unbeaten. He's haunting the division. We need for you to legitimate yourself against a real heavyweight and this guy people are looking at as a real heavyweight. The stakes are big for Luis Ortiz. Would you believe that World of Boxing won the rights to the ortiz Houston fight? for $600,000. $600,000 total. Luis Ortiz's take, if you split the purse bid, would be about $360,000 to fight Yusinov. And then of course, you know, if he wins, there'd be a new negotiation for him to fight the winner of the toughest heavyweight match out there. Right? Klitschko, who ruled the roost for years, for years, against Tyson Fury, who's still unbeaten. Right? Think about it. Let me tell you, given these facts, I wouldn't be surprised if Ortiz doesn't decide, look, hey man, $360,000 that's not more than I would get fighting some other opponent on a premium cable channel, <laughs> right? Not only that, why do I need to fight the winner of Klitschko, Fury, to get a shot at the title, right? Let me have my management group talk around and see if we could quietly have a deal with one of these pre premium cable channels to fight one of these other heavyweight champions, right? I know I've made a video here online of Ortiz Houstonoff. It's still being discussed, right? It's now gone to purse bid, etc. right? We now know that the fight is, you know, being shopped around, right? I'm guessing. Ultimately, the fight ends up in either Moscow or Belarus. 
In other words, Luis Ortiz wouldn't just be crossing the Atlantic to fight for the heavyweight title down the road. But Luis Ortiz would have to cross the Atlantic to fight in this fight. Right? Think about it. One of the things that has led me to this conclusion is the fact that Andre Ward in his 30s. Kovalev in his 30s. Right? These guys want as much money as possible right now. Don't they? They're not going to break off a big chunk of change to have this heavyweight elimination fight on the undercard. I don't see that happening. If I'm Houston off too, I'm thinking to myself, hell, I want the fight in Moscow or Belarus where Houston off lives right now. Right? I'm not an American. Why do I want to travel to Las Vegas for this fight? Right? I mean, the heavyweight division is big overseas. Lord knows, overseas is most of the champions. Right? I mean, isn't that the way it is? So, you know, I'm guessing, too, the promoter realizes this fight would be huge in Belarus. This fight could be big in Moscow. This fight would headline. Why would we accept second billing on some light heavyweight title fight? Right? So, I wouldn't be surprised if Luis Ortiz doesn't look at the lay of the land and say, you know what, I'm going to back out of this WBA tournament. Right? It'd be different. It'd be different if he got to fight the winner of, let's say, Lucas Brown against Fresno Kendo in the other bracket. Right? Maybe it'd be different. But here, he has to fight either a guy who was the reigning champion for years or the young lion who beat him by so wide a margin. There are moments in the first fight where Tyson Fury has both hands behind his back. Right? So expect a lot of disarray in the heavyweight division. Right? I'll just say that unbeaten fighters have options you can't even imagine. I'm still not convinced. I'm still not convinced that if Joseph Parker beats Alexander Demetrenko in New Zealand, that Anthony Joshua is going to fight Joseph Parker anytime soon. Right? Because, of course, both guys would be able to say, you know what? I'm going to instead fight Deontay Wilder. Right? Maybe, in fact, the young lion will say, hey, forget this. For me to be viewed as the real champion, I have to fight the winner of Fury. Klitschko. Right? Don't be surprised if belts don't get tossed in the garbage here because these fighters have already captured the public imagination. Right? Joseph Parker, think about it. If he beats Demetrenko, right? Sure, he's Joshua's mandatory. But then if Wilder says, hey, let's fight, he might say, hey, you know, I think Wilder's more vulnerable than Anthony Joshua. Right? He could easily step out of the weeds and say, hey, I want to fight the winner of, you know, Fresno Kendo Lucas Brown. A lot's going to happen in heavyweight. I don't think we fully appreciate all that's happening. But the one thing I think I know is that Luis Ortiz is not going to accept $360,000 to fight Alexander Ustinov in Europe or Russia, right? If that happens, I'll be the most shocked man here on YouTube. Anyway, that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video. Let me say this too. 
This is boxing. I respect everyone who's in the game. These guys are risking health, etc. Right? I know when I'm here saying some hard things that I feel certain guys would beat Deontay Wilder. Right? I understand a lot of people feel that I'm dissing Deontay Wilder. Far from it. I view Deontay Wilder as a warrior. Right? Guy traveled to the UK to fight Audley Harrison. Right? That fight was unclear until it happened. Right? The guy was prepared to travel to Russia. In fact, he was on his way there. He was training in Europe on his way to Russia to fight Alexander Povetkin. Right? He said he's still willing to fight Povetkin. Right? He fought Chris Ariola, ended that fight with some injuries. He's resting. I have no doubt that the guy's a warrior. The guy has proven to me that he's willing to travel to fight on the road. Even when the person he's fighting, Alexander Povetkin, I think would beat him. Right? So I admire these guys as warriors. But here in this part of the internet, we're going to give opinions. Right? I don't feel Deontay Wilder beats Povetkin. I don't feel Deontay Wilder beats Luis Ortiz. Hell, I would take Lucas Brown over Deontay Wilder. Right? Let me say, too, Anthony Joshua, dangerous guy, has mowed through some guys I thought would give him more of a fight. I thought Kevin Johnson at least would make an effort. Right? At the same time, it seems to me that when the Joshua people look at film of an opponent, if that guy's moving too much, Anthony Joshua's not going to fight him. Right? Seems to me Vegas lines have been crazy on Joshua, right? Over-unders of under four rounds. Come on. That's ridiculous, right? That's ridiculous, right? We seem to be confusing this guy with young Mike Tyson, right? So, you know, there will be a day where these guys have been tested, where my opinion has changed, right? Where they've proven that they could fight on their back foot, fight inside, right? Deal with foot movement, whatever the case may be. But because of the state of boxing today, I have little doubt that a guy like Luis Ortiz views himself as an uncrowned champion. I think Luis Ortiz knows that the deep end of the pool is with the winner of the Fury-Klitschko fight. I think... I think Ortiz himself knows that there's shorter cuts to get to the heavyweight title, right? And that everyone's your friend in boxing when you're winning. When you lose, you don't have that many friends, right? You have to prepare for a rainy day if they're only offering you in your mid-30s $360,000, and you're an unbeaten heavyweight who's already beaten Brian Jennings. Right? You're an unbeaten heavyweight who has more than 300 amateur wins. Right? You might actually get paid for not taking the deal and staying on the sidelines protecting your unbeaten record. Waiting for a bigger and better other opportunity. Anyway, that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.